Today's lesson is lesson 1-3.9, Naval Domination. Today we're going to be looking at the navies of the Crusade era and why it was that the Crusaders really did just dominate the uh, naval campaigns, naval warfare during the Crusades. Uh, things don't go quite as well for them on land, but the naval campaigns are really um, just dominated by the Crusaders. The reason for this ties into um, a lot of the history we've been talking about, but first it's important for us to look at what an advantage a good quality Navy is. Um, navies are expensive to produce. They are expensive to maintain. And usually in the Middle Ages, we don't see a whole lot of navies created simply for warfare. But within some of these crusader states, city-states in particular, um, we start to see some of this happening because navies are really useful. They can help you to transport soldiers. If you need to move soldiers across a big body of water, a navy is a great way to do it. It's fast. It's safe. They can transport supplies if you need to resupply something. You can attack coastal fortresses and cities. You can blockade enemy supplies. That is, keep your enemy from getting the food and the provisions that they need to keep fighting. Once they run out of food, an enemy is pretty easy to fight. And for this reason, navies are really a determining factor in many conflicts. Now, as we know, in the end, the Christian crusaders will lose the crusades. This is not a, a fight that they win. But early on, these navies really do play a role in many of the crusader victories. These navies came around because of trading. The origins of these strong, dominant crusader navies are connected to this Italian trading. We've talked about the growth of Italian city-states, about how they arose from these market towns, about how those market towns arose from these pilgrimages and pilgrimage routes, and this exposure to Eastern goods, this trade between East and West really does build these city-states, which then produce large navies for the dual purpose of trading and for defending their trade. And Venice and Genoa are really the ones that lead the way with this. Um, the Venetians largely are going to control the eastern half of the Mediterranean Sea, Genoese the western half of the Mediterranean Sea, divided by the uh, Italian peninsula. Um, and they're going to dominate this east-west trade. Now, in both republics, they set up a system where the merchants were expected to participate in the war. This goes back to those communes that we talked about, that everybody had pledged to each other mutual defense. They weren't depending upon a higher government authority, a feudalism type system to defend their city states. They had pledged this to each other. And that meant that these merchants would be warriors if need be. So the merchant fleet would be the navy of the city state. And in both of these city states, they had over uh, 3,000 ships that could be converted to a war purpose when need be. This is a huge advantage. Now, at a deeper look into the Crusader navies, we see that when we talk about the Crusader navies, we are talking about the Venetian and the Genoese navies. France did not have a navy worth mentioning. The Holy Roman Empire did not have a navy worth even saying the Holy Roman Empire had a navy. Okay, these were not naval powers. The British, yeah, they had a navy, but it was also not one that participated much in the war. Um, the Venetians and the Genoese really do. And uh, for use of these ships, for use of these navies, for all those important reasons we talked about before, transportation of troops, of supplies, of blockade, these city-states expected to be paid for this service. They were not doing it purely out of a sense of Christian duty. Um, in many cases, they expected payment up front. In a few cases, they expected payment up front. Usually, they promised, uh, were promised a share of the spoils of war um, or preferable trading rights 
um, in the Crusader states, which were created out of this. And the Ven uh, Venetians and the Genoese are going to invest so much in their navies because they see such an advantage to this um, that they actually get their ship production up to the point where they can produce a warship every day. That is, uh, these cities, you know, not to say from beginning to end, they would make one warship, but every day they were producing, they were finishing a new warship. That is tremendous production. The Islamic navies, by the other hand, um, it's not to say that they were non-existent, they certainly existed, um, but the Islamic Mediterranean fleet was significantly weakened by the First Crusade, really even before the First Crusade, but the First Crusade is going to limit their ability to produce a navy. Uh, coastal towns after the First Crusade are largely in Christian hands, Antioch, um, Jerusalem's not really coastal, but the Crusaders um, control all of that land, and therefore uh, the Islamic Empire cannot produce ships in those cities. Um, so no sizable Mediterranean navy could be created and launched. They could make ships, but the Venetians or Genoese would come by and destroy those before they became a large enough navy to be a threat. Uh, the navies that the Islamic Empire did uh, possess were largely in the Indian Ocean, in the Red Sea, the Persian Gulf, areas that were so separated from the Mediterranean Sea that they couldn't impact the fighting there. And there was not the technology and the ship shipbuilding yet required to go all the way around Africa with a navy. So the Islamic navies really don't become a factor during the war. Now, the reason why right from the beginning they're at a uh, disadvantage was going back about 40 years before the First Crusade, when the Genoese Navy is going to get into a fight with the Islamic Empire over control of the island of Sardinia. And the two navies will go head to head there, the Genoese Navy and the Islamic Empire's Navy. Um, the Pisans, another city state in uh, Italy are actually gonna be on the Genoese side here, but they're really a minor player thereafter. And um, these Italian navies defeat that Islamic navy. They never have time to rebuild a substantial force. So really going back to uh, the 1040s, 1050s, really, um, the Islamic empire has no sizable navy. And for the entire uh, crusading period, right up until the Ottoman empire, the 1400s, 1500s, the Italians are not threatened for dominance in the Mediterranean. So this Mediterranean Sea, which was once a Roman lake, was once again dominated by the Italians. Um, Genoa was at times an ally of the rightful, um, and at some time, sorry, Genoa at times was an ally, also was at times a rival of the more powerful Venetians. We got a lot on the Venetians in another lesson, and um, it's time to talk about them again because the Venetian Navy is going to be really important as well, perhaps even more so than the Genoese. Uh, the Genoese establish Italian do dominance. The Venetians are going to hold it and keep it. Um, we see this in the First Crusade, uh, which was largely a success. Over 200 warships uh, from the Venetians participated in this uh, fight, 200 of which were at the Siege of Antioch during the First Crusade which established um, dominance of the Crusaders in what is today Israel and um, coastal Syria, Lebanon. Uh, we um, also see the Venetians who are going to, you know, want something in return for all their help and they decide that what they've gotten is not enough and they're really gonna drive that fourth crusade. Fourth crusade we talked about before, this is the one that was called to recapture Jerusalem but instead the Venetians wanting a big payout for it, direct the crusade toward Constantinople. And uh, the capital of the Byzantine empire, fellow Christian empire is sacked in order to increase the wealth of Venice. So the Venetian Navy sometimes used to help the crusaders, sometimes used in a way that actually hurts Christianity and its fight against Islam. But, one thing is sure, and that was crusader domination on the seas. Between the Genoese and the Venetians, the Mediterranean was completely in the hands of the crusaders. The Islamic empire is never going to pose a significant threat 
to um, Crusader movement on this sea, the trade of Crusader states and um, Western Europe. None of that is ever threatened by the Islamic empire and by Muslim potential domination of the Mediterranean. It just doesn't happen. Venice and Genoa are too strong for the Islamic empire to ever get a foothold in the Mediterranean. And for that reason, um, naval domination really goes on the Crusaders' side. Now, navies help in war, the Crusaders will lose the Crusades. In the long run, um, the Islamic Empire, by that time it will be the Ottomans, um, are going to put the final uh, blow to the Crusaders. Um, the Crusades will fail, but it is certainly not due to any lacking of naval dominance. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I'll see you next time.